Okay, this little video is just some tips and um, ideas on structuring for how to get a good score on a B criterion in the science NYP, looking at the kind of five um, scale, so grade nine and grade 10. Um, it's a little bit different for younger years, but you can still use the same structure. It's just the level of detail is higher for grade nine and grade 10. Okay, so we've got the criteria up here. So the first of all, it's broken down into four different sections. So the first one that we're gonna be marking you against is basically what you're going to investigate. So you have to come up with your own research question. Okay, and I'll explain how to do a good mark for that one there. Um, so looking for the seven, eight mark, it says you explain a problem or question to be tested by a scientific investigation. Okay, the next one is what do you think is going to happen? So it says you formulate and explain a, a testable hypothesis using correct scientific reasoning. Okay, sometimes it's really hard because um, a lot of people often get the five, six bracket in this um, because you have often given an explanation, but it's not always using the correct science in there. So being really careful, making sure you've got the real reasoning behind it. The third one essentially is your variables. So that's what are you going to measure? Okay, and it says you explain for the seven, eight mark here, how to manipulate the variables and explain how sufficient relevant data will be correct, um, collected. Okay, so I'll explain how when you're doing your variables, you should be able to get a better score on that section. And then the last bit is about what, how you are going to do your investigation. And this is your method. And it says you design a logical, complete and safe method. Okay, so this one is a little bit different to the marking grid above because it says logical. And often with students, it's when we find when they are marking this. You've often given us a safe method. Sometimes it's not fully complete, you've missed out some steps and sometimes they're in the wrong order. So we often can't give you that last part for the 7A here. Uh, and also it says where you select appropriate materials and equipment. So this is the four different things that we're gonna be looking at throughout this little video, okay? So the first one is going to relate to the first marking criteria, okay, with str um, strands one and strands two. So this is with the background theory, okay, and I often split this into two different sections. I give it a little introduction with the research question stated. So I normally give the outline of what the experiment is and what's going to be taking place. Um, and the research question, I quite often like to follow the formula of how does the independent variable, so what you are changing, affect the dependent variable okay to make it a little bit more detailed i usually give value so for example how does increasing the length from 10 centimeters um, uh, to one meter of a wire affect the resistance of the wire okay um, or something like how does changing the temperature from uh, 20 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius affect the rate of cooling. Okay, so again, putting values in that is really nice. Um, the next thing then is also comes into kind of that next bit about your hypothesis and using correct science. So normally I also give some science into my introduction here. You could actually move this down and do this with your hypothesis, but usually things I'm looking for is I'm looking for reasons why your, effect, your independent variable affects your dependent variable, so what you're measuring. I usually think if there's any equations that you have to calculate something that are useful in here, especially if it's looking at an equation like a relationship for a straight line graph. Um, like a y equals mx, that's often useful to put up here as well. So then we go to the hypothesis, what do you think will happen? So do you think the dependent variable is going to be increasing? Is it going to be decreasing? Is it going to be increasing linearly? Is it proportional? Is it directly proportional? Okay, so trying to start using some really clear scientific language there, okay? Do you think it's just going to increase linearly? Do you think it's going to increase exponentially? Okay, so why that you're beginning to discuss what graph shape you should get. And again, if you're not sure if it's going to be linear or proportional, try and see if you can find an equation that would help you describe that. Okay, that's the best thing here. I often get people telling me it's going to increase linearly, but they haven't given me a reason. So I can't give them the 7, 8 mark there because they haven't explained it correctly. They've given me the correct hypothesis, but they haven't given me the justification that they understand it. So if you are going to give me a graph shape saying it's increasing, that's okay. If you want to tell me if it's increasing linear, linearly, oh, sorry, it's a hard word to say, you need to give me an equation to back that up, okay? Um, so I hope that helps with those two marking strands. The next one then is about your variables, okay, which is our third marking strand, okay? So we have our independent variable, what we are changing, 
dependent variable, what we are measuring and our controls, what we keep the same. So I'm gonna jump out of my presentation for the moment and I'm going to go into my write-up template. This is what I give all of my classes. So we've done our introduction and research question and we've given our hypothesis. So normally now I'm gonna start saying my independent variable, what we are changing. So my independent variable, it might be the temperature um, of water. Okay, it might be the temperature of water of heating, it could be anything, whatever you are changing. The range of measurements, okay, I might give the values I'm going to go in between. So I'm going to start giving some more detail here. Remember, because we said explain the variables, if I go back, we are explaining the variables and explaining how sufficient and relevant data will be collected. Okay, so I'm going to tell them exactly how to collect the data and I'm going to explain the range of measurements. So I'm going to say that I'm going to measure the temperature every 10 degrees Celsius oops, from 20 to 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. So again, I'm giving the range, I'm saying what I'm going between, and I'm also telling them how much I'm going up by. I'm then gonna say, how will this be changed? Okay, so I'm going to describe how this will be changed. So um, for example, I might use a hot plate. Okay, so I could say place on a hot plate and measure the temperature with a thermometer. Okay, so again, I'm putting a little bit in there. Again, you could give more detail into this, okay? Um, you could take what type of thermometer in there. Uh, you might sort of say you might leave it for a certain amount of time, um, but that's going to put in for your independent variable, okay? So I'm going to delete those. Dependent, then, is what we are measuring. So you might be measuring, again, let's say you were measuring temperature, okay? This is just an example. I'm just going to stick with temperature. So how will this be measured? Again, it's going to be a thermometer, but that's not really being very clear. So a thermometer every how often you're looking. Um, thermometer, is it a digital one? So re also, is it or is it a glass one? So you might want to say about reading at eye level. Okay, again, to reduce something like the parallax error. Sorry, I realised I spelled parallax wrong there. Um, again, just giving a detail of how you're going to take that. Are you going to be taking it every 10 seconds? Are you going to be taking it just after a certain amount of time, for example, if it's temperature? Your dependent variable might not also be something that you directly measure. It might be something that you calculated. So, for example, it could be the final velocity. Okay, and again, how would this be measured? So, you need to measure the distance and the time taken. Okay. Velocity is calculated using velocity is equal to displacement or distance divided by time. And again, I'm giving in how I'm going to measure that. Okay, measure the distance. How am I going to measure the distance? Okay, with a ruler and the time taken with a stopwatch. Okay, again, putting in some detail of how to mark, how to get those. Again, going back to this little part here. I'm explaining how to collect that data. The next thing then is about thinking about your controls. And people often go to me, but miss, how many controls do I need? It completely depends on your practical. Common ones are things like equipment. Okay, so things like equipment, like if you're using a digital piece of equipment, you want to use the same one in case the one that you're using for, let's say, your scale, like you're trying to weigh the mass. Okay, let's say that's slightly different to a different another one. You would want to make sure you're using the same balance each time. Okay, so you want to say why it needs to be controlled. So different pieces of equipment have diff um, or may read slightly differently. Okay, um, to stop this error, I would always use the same one because if yours was wrong at least your all your values would be wrong by the same amount okay and we call that a systematic error so how would we control use the same piece of equipment it might be things like the temperature you want to keep the temperature the same um, so you are doing it at room temperature um, 
so you keep it in the same classroom and do it on the same day okay um you might be looking at um let's say oh I'm trying to think of another one um Let's say you're trying to do something or you are trying to heat it up, but you don't want heat to be lost to a surrounding. You're going to maybe put insulation around it so no heat is lost to the surroundings. Why is that going to be controlled? Because you want all of your heat to go to the object you're heating. You don't want energy to be lost because that's going to give you a false reading. So in this, I always like to say what the control is, giving the reason why it needs to be controlled with this, say how it affects your data. Okay. The last one, then how you're going to control it. And don't just say, use the same for each of them. You want to give a little bit of detail in, in there, okay? Um, so the next part was then about your methodology, method, method and your equipment. So I usually do three different sections. I do an equipment, I do a method, and then I do a risk assessment. Again, I'm going to go back to my template. With my equipment, I normally do a list, okay? I like to do a list. Um, I like to draw a diagram as well to show how to set it up. And I like to give details. For example, if I'm using masses, I would say five times 50 gram masses. Okay, I don't just want to write masses there. Okay, I'm trying to be a bit more specific so the person who's following my equipment knows exactly what I'm using. Um, and also any uncertainties of equipment. Okay, so for example, your ammeter, let's say your ammeter measured only to two decimal places, you might have an uncertainty of plus or minus. Okay, so plus or minus 0 0.01, okay, amps, for example. Okay, so let's put that as an example in there. Um, so again, just putting that down as a simple list, make sure you've got detail. If there is equipment error, put your equipment error in there. Methods, because you want them to be logical and in, this, in a order, you want to make sure you do it step by step. All right, so I normally start just doing a numbered bullet point from here. Okay, if you start writing paragraphs, it's very difficult for your teachers to follow and you tend to miss out steps when you're doing that. Um, you need to describe how to change the data. You sometimes just say, um, increase the length. You don't tell me how to increase the length or decrease the length. Um, you might say, heat it up. Well, how am I heating it up? What am I using to heat it up? Okay, so being really specific in how you are changing that data. So going back to your independent variable, how are you going to change this? Okay, other things you also want to do is you want to kind of give the values as well. You also want to discuss any repeats. All right, um, so give the values, okay, give the range, uh, as well as saying how to change the data, how to collect the data. Um, and also, for example, you might let say, let's say above, you were doing a calculation, okay, give the calculations. Um, with your method, it's really good to write it before you do your experiment, but it's also then really helpful to look at your method when you're actually doing the experiment in class, okay, because you might notice that you're missing a step. So what I would do is write do your experiment, kind of like do a mini test run, follow your method that you have written step by step. So like go, okay, number one, do this. Number two, do that. And see, are you missing anything or have you missed anything that you needed to put in? So that's a little kind of tip for when you're doing your experiment. Have a little go at reading your method and try and follow it. Did you need to add anything else in? Did you need to add any more details in? Okay. Risk assessments, um, I like to do them as a table. I quite like tables. I think they just look really neat and tidy and they make sure you don't forget things. Um, outline the risk. So for example, you might talk about, let's say, um, the chemical that you used is um, an irritant. Okay, how to prevent the risk. All right, so you're gonna be wearing safety goggles to protect the eyes um, you might be wearing gloves you might be wearing a lab coat um, you will also make sure that you um, clear up any spillages okay so putting in all these details of how to prevent the risk okay so what sort of things need to be done again i would give some more detail here so wearing safety goggles um, to protect the eyes um, as this would begin to make your eyes itch and could affect 
pure vision. Um, also things like washing hands. Okay. And then the last one, what to do if it does happen. Okay, so things like if this happens, okay, you go, so you wash um, your hands under cold water for five minutes and get help from the teacher. Okay, so again, putting in what you would do in this situation um, if it does happen. So what is the risk, how to prevent it, what to do if it does happen. Sometimes, especially if you're doing chemistry ones, they can have lots and lots of different risk assessments there depending on what chemicals you're using. Um, if you're worried that you haven't got any risks, just put in your normal lab safety rules. So things like making sure your chairs are put under the desk, making sure that all bags are away, that you've got a clean working area, that you should make sure that you've got a nice amount of space so that you're not um, interfering with anybody else. Um, so just your general lab safety would go in there. But again, just making sure you kind of put those in um, just sort of for a nice little risk assessment, just to show that you have considered safety in the lab. So you would also say something like there's no chemicals being used. Um, there's no electricity, electricity being used, um, but you still want to make sure you're working in a safe environment. So and then put those in. Um, so that is how to write a B. Um, last little thing was just some final top tips. Um, again, when you're doing the practical, check your written method. So things like, is it in the right order? Have you missed any steps? Have you given specific details such as measurements? So like, have you said, start at 10 centimeters, start at 10 degrees Celsius, start at 10 volts. How many times did you do it? So how many did in terms of like, let's say I started at 10 volts, did I go up to 15 volts? Did I do each trial, through, was it, did I do each one three times? Okay, mention any calculations, calculations if they're needed. Um, the other one that, sorry, I forgot to say there is also mentioning how you are being accurate and precise. So for example, um, when you're taking your rulers, when you're looking at the thermometer, making sure that you're at eye level, um, making sure that you are being quick in between your readings, lots of different things like that as well.